Assalamu alaikum. Aren't you guys already burned out? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa tasliman kathira thumma amma ba'd. One day, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'l'an warda was walking one of the streets of Medina. On the path of Medina, and you always think of Medina as a utopian society. Always, mashallah, busy in ibadah and worship and activity and each and every one of us would love to live in Medina. We love that we have lived at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have this utopian idea about Medina. And here is this Sahabi, his name was Handala, was on the path of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq sees Handala, just like when you see your friend walking by, what would you usually say? Assalamu alaikum, how are you doing, right? So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he passed by Handala and he says, Assalamu alaikum, kayfa asbahd? Good morning, Handala, how are you doing? Handala answers back saying, Nafaqa Handala, I'm a hypocrite. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was stunned by that answer. He says, Mah, what? What's wrong with you? We sit with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيُحَدِّثُنَا We listen to his speech. فَكَأَنَّنَا وَالْجَنَّةَ وَالنَّارَ يَعِينَ As if we see Jannah and Jahannam. We listen to him that the imagination of Jahannam and Jannah become reality. We become submissive. Because of that. ولكن, when we leave, فإذا خرجنا من عنده وعفسنا الأزواج والأولاد, when we go home to the reality of life, and we had to deal with our spouses and our children, نسينا كثيرا, we forget so much. We're not ourselves anymore. We act completely differently. Brothers and sisters, isn't he speaking about me and you? Did you guys feel the same thing? Perhaps now as I'm talking, you'll be listening, alhamdulillah, to these wonderful speeches and talks. You feel that your iman is shooting up, going actually above that, even the ceiling, crashing the ceiling all, all the way up. But each and every one of you now that we're seeing this convention is going to, towards an end, you know what's coming next, right? He says, man, I wish that this never comes to an end. I wish I can stay here longer. Can I stay here forever? I wish that we can. But we all know what is coming next. Nasina kathira. We tend to forget a lot. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he heard the interpretation of Handala to the meaning of hypocrisy, he goes, Wallahi inni la ajdu mithla dhalik. If this is the case, I'm like you. I feel the same thing too. Who's talking here, Jama? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Can you imagine Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, even the thought of hypocrisy crosses his mind? That was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala So they both went straight to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This issue need to be resolved once and for all. I'm not going to live like this anymore. I want to finish this right now. So they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like each one of us here, we say, you know what? I just can't take it anymore, man. Today my iman is so high and then next day I'm feeling so burned out. And then it goes up and down, goes up and down. And then eventually you realize, that's too much. I can't take it anymore. So you want a solution that is once and for all. Just like everybody else, you want this magic wand will solve the problem for you. Subhanallah, they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bi abihu wa ummi wa How merciful, how passionate and compassionate he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He listened to them carefully. He listened, qala ya Rasulullah, nakunu indaka fatuhadithuna fakaannana wal jannata wal nara ya'in. We come to you, we listen to you, we start getting mashallah emotionally high that we see al jannah and jahannam just like it's reality in front of our eyes right now. But when we leave you, we go home and we try to interact with our children, our families. We tend to forget so much. Please, help us. Help us, find a way for us to survive these feelings. Rasulullah sallallahu he just looked at them and he said, Subhanallah, qala law annakum تَكُنُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ كَمَا تَكُنُونَ عِنْدِي If you would be at home with your family or with your children, the way you are with me right now, if you're constantly like this, which means what? Always righteous. Always good, mashallah. If you're always like this, he said to them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَصَفَحَتْكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ فِي الطُّرُقَاتِ Angels will shake hands with you in the streets. What does that mean, Ajma? That means you'll be angels. Why would the angels hide from you then? What's the difference between an angel? 
Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Walakin, Sa'atan wa sa'a. There's one hour for this and one hour for that. And what is the meaning of this hour here? When it comes to our, unfortunately, our people, they, they misunderstand the concept of one hour here and one hour there, which means one hour for worship and one hour for recreation, just to relax. One hour to energize and one hour you're running on that energy. That's the meaning of it. Many people, when they stretch these, these hours, they, they, mis do, they, they miscalculate the proportions. So it becomes five minutes here and the rest of the day over there in one area. No wonder we always feel tired when we come to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us have this perception that we're looking for perfection. Ya jama'a, don't you want to become perfect? All of us, or most of all, at least most of us, when we look for perfection, we're looking for this non-human perfection. That angelic perfection. No sins, no mistakes, no errors, always righteous, always on an emotional high. Well, I have to wake you up to reality. You're a human being. And by default of being a human being, you are going to make mistakes. You are going to make mistakes. Brother Yusha Evans mentioned something yesterday, beautiful statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing his uh, attributes of being the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Ghafoor, the oft forgiving. How is that? By allowing you to make these mistakes so you could repent and seek his forgiveness. How will we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most, most merciful, oft forgiving, if we don't make mistakes to ask forgiveness for? How will we know that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making this as part of our nature as human beings. However, he said, وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ And those who are the best among those who make mistakes are those who come back in repentance. التوابون, those who rush into repentance. Which means if you're going to be looking for perfection, you better look for human perfection. What is a human perfection? If you make mistakes, fix it. Don't just live instead of denial that you can never make mistakes. And whenever you make mistakes, it destroys you. Breaks you down completely. And when you make mistakes, don't be arrogant. Come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness and repentance. Cry your eyes out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's human perfection. And that's how we were designed as human beings. When you make mistakes, you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given you the choice. Try your best to be as much righteous as you can. But if you make mistake, you need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might say, but you know, when it comes to mistakes, some people, they make different kind of mistakes. That is true. In terms of the quality of the mistake, that depends. Some people's mistakes are very easy. To others, they're like major sins. So when you look at this, depends on how much iman you have, Allah will put you to the test. And if you fail it, you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to the issue of ibadat, ya ikhwa, brothers and sisters, when it comes to the subject of worship, one of the biggest problems we have is uh, understanding why do you need worship for, really? Why do we need worship for? When we were kids, remember when your parents were raising you to pray and make salah, read the Quran? Why did you need to pray? You know why? Most of us, especially the Arab and the Palestinians in particular, and I'm one of you, yani. We grow up hearing our parents saying, إِذَا مَا بِتْصَلِّ Allah بِحُطَّكْ فِي النَّارِ Right? If you don't pray, Allah will put you in Jahannam. You grow up that Allah is so scary. And ibadah, you need to do that, otherwise you're going to go into Jahannam. But I'm so tired. I'm so burned out. Is there anything I can do to uplift my spirit, my morale, my iman? Because ibadah is to block you from Jahannam. That's what it is. That's how we grew up learning. Your kids, if they're misbehaving at home, how do you treat them? How do you teach them something? Tell them, you know what? Put your clothes on, come with me to the masjid. They learn value, very good value, mashallah. That masjid is punishment. <laughs> you need to punish your kids, take them to the masjid. That's how they learned it. Quran is the same thing. You know what? Stop playing. Turn the TV off. Take your mushaf. Do your lesson. That's punishment. We're teaching our kids the wrong, the wrong values when it comes to ibadat. When ibadah is supposed to be that, that energy, that battery that you charge your iman with.
We don't do that for our kids. It's not like, listen, whoever finishes his homework first, you're going to come to the masjid with me. If you do this, I'll take you to this program, inshallah. You don't teach them that. Instead, it's punishment. And that's why the kids start running away from me when they hear the adhan. Because then, oh my God, I'm going to the masjid. Um, the other will say, La hawla wa la I feel sorry for you. Instead of making them compete to come with you to the ibadah, to salah, to the masjid. It's okay. Zaykallah khair. Next, when it comes to the ibadah, we were taught a wrong value when it comes to ibadah. The more you do, the better it is. The more ibadah you do, the more righteous you become. That's one thing. But the more ibadah you do, the better it is. That's how we, taught, we were taught. Okay, did you pray your sunnah? No, not yet. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Why is that? I'm not here saying not to pray the sunnah. Instead, I would like for, for us to focus on the quality. The quality of our ibadat, one step at a time. And Nabi sallallahu says, Lam yushadda ahadun hadad din illa ghalaba. No one, no one tries to pull that din or try to practice that din so hard, but will be defeated. You can't take that deen, and I don't want to say in, 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 so, in a passionate way, but overzealous when it comes to practice. People, they, just yesterday, they never prayed, they never went to the masjid, and overnight they would like to do qiyam mulal every single night, fast every single day, give all their money, you know, for the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and just give away the dunya, and go and make hijrah and so on. Take it easy. Just take it easy. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you, you don't try to, if you try to do that, that, that deen will defeat you. The practice will defeat you. You will not be able to make it. فَأَوْغِلُوا فِيهِ بِرِفْقِ Means take it easy. When you go into the deen, when you practice, slowly and gradually. Upgrade your level one step, one level at a time. At a time. It's not how much you do. It's the, qu the quality that you do. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, <clears throat> when he spoke about the best good deeds, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? Qala adwamuhu wa inqal. The most continuous, even if it was little. This is what I call the power of little. We always think the power is for the, for the more, much. But it's the power of little. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always says, kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan, thaqilatani fil mizani habibatani rahman Two words, two simple words. They're so easy on the tongue. They're so beloved to the most merciful and so heavy in the scale. You know what these words are? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al azim Wow. These are so heavy in the scale. Yeah, if you keep doing that constantly and continuously. This most beloved to Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to charity, Many of us, if we don't give in the thousands, we don't count that as charity. That's why we keep holding our money back until I get some so I can give it in a fundraising. But why not give in every single day a few pennies? You know the change pocket that you have in your pocket? Have a change jar like a cookie jar. Call it a charity jar in the home. Do it and teach your kids. All this money goes into that jar at the end of the month. You send it to charity. Don't send it as loose change though. Just go first to the bank and get the dollar bills and give it to them as it afterwards, inshallah. But the point is, you do something little. This is the power of little. Also, when it comes to that, annafila ikhwah. Praying, just little, few, few raka'at. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Yusbihu ala kulli ahadikum, ala sulama kulli ahadikum sadaqa. Every day in the morning you wake up, you're responsible to pay, char to pay charity on behalf of every joint in your body. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you couldn't do that, then he said, two raka, two raka, duha time, which is the forenoon time, around nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock these days. You pray two raka, that will suffice you from doing all these acts of good deeds. Simple two raka can get you there. Praying fajr and staying in your position and try you make your dhikr until the sun rises, praying two raka after that, that's equivalent to going to hajj and umrah. Do you guys know that? You don't have to do so much so you can become righteous. You begin with that which is little. And as you grow up in your iman, it will push you to do more and more. The problem with us, we try to hold everything in one hand. 
Everything. I don't want to let this go. Oh, this is a good time. This is a good opportunity. Just take it easy. Don't burn yourself out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even he taught Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this value. Qala in surah that you all know perhaps. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Do you guys know the surah? The end of the surah. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to him? Qala fa'idha faragta fansab wa ila rabbika faragab. Do you know what the meaning of those two words? Fa'idha faragta fansab. When you're done from your duty as a da'ya. When you're done doing what you do outside, then fansab. What's fansab? Do you know what's a nasab? What is it? Nasab means fatigue. How come? If he's done outside, he needs to go and, and put himself into fat, to fatigue. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to balance. To balance our ibadat. What you're doing outside is for the people. Da'wah, preaching, talking, and so on. But then you need to uh, charge your inner battery. This is your khalwa. That's your seclusion between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going to the masjid, participating in these events and activities and so forth. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's amazing. That makes you feel a sense of community and with everybody else around you. But what you also need is to energize your heart. You need to energize your heart. That's the, the, the lump of flesh. That's the lump of flesh that you know, Sister Yasmin was talking about. That if it's good, everything else will be good after that. And if it was bad, everything will be bad afterwards. How can I fix this? You're going to have to divide your time between the people and yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I do that? The best thing of doing it, the best thing you could do that is to practice something is completely overlooked in the time in the age of electricity. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's something called Qiyamul Layl, night prayer. In the age of electricity, our day starts around 10 p.m. And then our night finishes at 8 a.m. in the morning. That's when you wake up to pray, right? Praying Fajr is already gone, unfortunately. We messed up the whole system. And the Prophet ﷺ was given that, that precious instruction. You need to stand up in Qiyamul Layl until you feel the fatigue. Because that's for your own sake. That's for you. How often do we stand up to do Qiyamul Layl? I'm not asking you to stand up for 2, 3, 5, 10 hours. I'm asking you to go, out, to go early to bed at night. And I'm saying early, I'm talking after Isha. And then you wake up early right before Fajr, half an hour, one hour. Begin with the power of little. And just pray to Raka in seclusion when everybody's snoring around you. And do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Slowly and gradually, you'll enjoy it. Because that becomes your private session with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always try to serve other people. We always put ourselves for the service of human beings. Alhamdulillah, it's an amazing value to be for them. But we forget about ourselves. And it's very crucial, the way we provide for others, that we need to be also providing for our own souls and our own selves. Don't be like the, the candle. Candle burns itself to light for the others. Just be like the sun. You come out at one time, and you're going to have to sit at the end of the day for yourself. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.